Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video of part two of my 30 days of Christmas ornaments. Today we are making a recycled can lid ornament using some free printables I found online. I will link those in the description of the video. And for each ornament, I'm using two can lids of the same size. So here you can see I'm just placing the lid down and tracing around it where I want to cut out from this graphic. So I'm going to cut this circle out, get it to fit onto the lid, make any trims if needed to get it to fit exactly within the raised edge of the lid. Then taking the second one, I'm gonna find where else I want to trace a circle out of my image, trace that one out and cut it as well. Next, we're gonna put some Mod Podge on the can lid. We're gonna brush it around to make it as even as possible. And then we will attach down our circles, our graphic that we printed. I will say that these had dried for at least a day or so before I tried to Mod Podge them. This was to make sure that the ink from my printer was completely dry. So I kind of started pressing these down in the center and then worked my way out. You can see here I did both the larger set and the smaller set. Then I'm going to lightly brush on another layer of Mod Podge over the top, just brushing it until I get it evenly distributed on the paper. I don't want to brush it so much that the ink runs. Making a simple twine loop here, I'm going to glue it into place on the back of my front image, then apply some more hot glue and attach the back imaged can lid. So these are back to back. Now you could make these with just one. I just think this looks nicer and more finished having the two images and hiding the twine hanger in the middle. Now I am gonna put these under something heavy just to make sure the two can lids are securely fastened together. Here I'm just gonna do that same process with the smaller set of lids. Once those were completely dried, I'm taking a thicker jute twine. This one is from Walmart, and I'm just running a bead of hot glue down that space between the two lids and covering it up with this one layer of the jute twine, trimming where necessary, and I think this just gives it a nicer finished look. The last thing I'm gonna do is take some pieces of some crinkled up dyed seam binding, and I'm just gonna tie these randomly in knots on the lower portion of my twine hanger and this is just going to give a little decorative touch you will then want to trim them to make sure they're not covering up your image on the front or back of your ornament And here they are. I just love being able to recycle things that I'm using in my home and put them to a new use Today we are making some really cute hot cocoa and candy spoons using some wood spoons, some puffy paint, some ribbon, and some little, I don't even know what to call them, buttons and little um, small plastic confettis for Christmas from Hobby Lobby. So you can use the bamboo spoons I've showed at the beginning. They're in the fall uh, tableware department. These wood spoons are from Amazon. I believe they're actually to be used as cutlery. I'm going to fill three of them with white puffy paint and the other three I'm going to fill with brown puffy paint to look like chocolate. So once we get our spoons filled with a little bit of chocolate or white uh, candy, I'm going to add some buttons and I have these little, I think they were in the resin 
section that you can um, add to resin ornaments and things. These little red and green ones are little confettis that look like holly leaves or Christmas trees. And you can find a lot of these little things in the jewelry making section as well. These were little like swirly candies. And then these look like um, little sprinkles. So I'm adding these right into the wet puffy paint and then I'm going to tap them so that they get set in there and then we're going to let those dry completely. Now these spoons were a little long so I did cut maybe an inch, inch and a half off of each one and then we're going to hang a twine hanger on these and then also add a bow to make them decorative for hanging on a tree. And here are my finished ornaments. I think you could probably also use actual red or green or white sprinkles from the baking section and just use your creativity. Today we are making a really simple but cute block nativity ornament using tumbling tower blocks, some wood beads, some wood stars, and a little bit of burlap ribbon and jute. So here I'm making three ornaments. I figure if I'm making one, might as well make multiples, taking two tumbling tower blocks and wood gluing them together. Then I'm gonna cut a little bit longer than usual piece of jute twine for the hanger because we're going to be knotting each end and pulling it through a bead into the middle of the bead to glue it. So this is gonna be the hanger and what we're attaching here are the heads for Joseph and Mary. So I'm putting a larger bead on. You can use the same size beads if you want for their two heads. I just happen to have two different sizes. And then once those are tied on there, we're gonna trim the end, put a little bit of hot glue on the actual knot, and then pull it into the bead so that it is flush. So it's inside, there's a flat surface there that we will then glue onto their bodies. Here's the other side with the larger bead, again, putting a little bit of glue there and pulling the knot into the bead that will be the head. Now for Jesus's body, I'm taking some burlap ribbon. I'm cutting it into smaller pieces. I'm gonna fold it in half and then wrap it kind of in thirds and then a little bit extra on the front. This is gonna be Jesus's swaddling clothes. So once I have it wrapped the size I want, I'll just attach it shut with some hot glue and we'll make three of those for our three ornaments. Next, I'm going to make three small, simple bows using that same jute twine that we used for the hanger. These will eventually go on top of baby Jesus's clothes. Once my wood glue is dry on my blocks, I'm gonna sand it lightly, and then I'm gonna glue the burlap to the front, kind of at an angle, so it's like Mary and Joseph are holding him. And my smallest bead, I'm just going to glue that above the burlap there to be Jesus's head. And we'll do all three of those. And then we'll take those small jute bows and just add that to the front of his burlap swaddling clothes as a finishing touch on baby Jesus. 
Now we'll take the jute hanger that has the two beads on, on either end and just putting a dot of hot glue. I'm gonna glue Mary's head onto one. We're gonna let that dry completely before we come back and glue on the larger bead, which will be Joseph's head. Here you'll see me do that now on the left tumbling tower block. I'm gonna glue that down. So this twine not only attaches the two heads, but it also then acts as the hanger for our ornament. The last thing we're going to add to the ornament, once we get this last head bead glued on, are these wood stars from Dollar Tree as well. I'm gonna flip it over because I want to attach the star to one side of our jute hanger. So I'm just putting it at an angle and kind of laying the jute twine down into that glue until it's dried completely and that star is secured. And here they are. I just love how simple and natural these are. Of course, if you wanted them painted, you could definitely paint all of these pieces as well to give it less of a rustic look, but I just love how these turned out. Today we're making a really simple and easy to make circle tag beaded ornament using these tags from Hobby Lobby, some stickers, some paint, and some ribbon. So these are found in the party section of Hobby Lobby. I don't remember how many come in a package, but at least three or four. And so all I'm doing is I am going to paint the circle tag. You could paint both sides. I'm just gonna paint one. And then I'm going to put some Mod Podge on top of the paint because I'm going to spread that out and then place whatever kind of Christmas sticker or maybe something even that you cut out from some scrapbook paper on top of that Mod Podge and then brush more Mod Podge over the top of it. Really the possibilities are endless on this ornament. I just wanna make sure you guys know again that these wood tags are found in the party section, the same place I find my white and black tags. So we're just gonna continue doing this I am using stickers from a scrapbooking collection. So these are like all the sticker images that coordinate with the papers that come in the pack. But you could even just go to the Christmas stickers. These would make really cute ornaments. They would also make really cute gift tags. You could write on the back to from and these would be just a cute little decoration to add to your package. While that Mod Podge is drying, I'm gonna take this ribbon that has the red, green, and some gold in it. I'm just going to tie four small simple bows trying to get it the right size that i want just continue to pull the tails and then adjust until you get it where you want it and then just trim off the excess on the tails we're going to make four of these bows so we can glue one onto each ornament i'm just going to put the glue right there at the hole where the jute twine is and add this as a final touch to each of our ornaments and here they are, super fun and easy. You could also, if you really wanted to, remove the beads and paint those as well. But I love these. I love how simple they are. You could make a lot of these in a short amount of time. Today we are making a cork angel ornament using some jute twine, a couple wood beads, a couple of corks, and some ribbon. So I'm going to make two different angels here. One, I'm going to use this two inch or maybe it's one and a half inch, I'm not sure. It's a wider wired ribbon, Christmas themed obviously. And then I have a thinner plain burlap ribbon. So what we're going to do to make the wings is we're going to cut a length of the ribbon and then loop it around, press down on the wires so that it lays flat, and then we're gonna tie a piece of jute twine around the center, just like as if we were making a simple bow for a project, but we're gonna knot that and trim the ends, fluff these out just a little bit 
for our angel wings. We'll do the same thing with this wider ribbon that is colorful. So you can decide if you want to keep your angels neutral or if you want to add a little bit of color to them as well. You could use whatever ribbon you choose. We're tying the knot with the jute twine, trim off the ends, and then we'll just kind of fluff out the wire ribbon a little bit for our wings. Next, we're going to use the twine again to make a hanger for each of our ornaments. We're gonna cut a length, loop it around, and tie it at the end, making sure it's the length we want, and then we can trim off the excess of the string. Here you're gonna see I'm gonna make one, I'm gonna knot it, and this one's gonna be a little too long, so we're just gonna knot it again a little bit higher, and then trim off all of the excess from the string. Then we're going to take some hot glue and we're gonna glue that hanger onto the back of our cork. Use um, a tool to press that down into the glue so as not to burn yourself. I did then put a little bit more hot glue over the top of it so that our hanger is secure. We'll do that to both. Then once that hanger is on, we can put a little bit more hot glue and we're gonna glue the bow right onto the back of the cork. I glued the knot onto the cork so that the back looked nice. That's gonna be our angel wings. Then we're gonna glue on a wood bead for the head of the angel and then glue around the head a small piece of jute twine to be the angel's halo. We're gonna do these same steps on both of our ornaments. And here are these cute, simple, recycled cork angel ornaments. I love them. I think they're so cute. You could definitely modify these for whatever color or style of decor you'd like. Today we are making some clothespin snowflakes. I was so excited to see these colored clothespins at Hobby Lobby in their crafting section. And then I'm also gonna use these snowflakes from Hobby Lobby as well. So you can find these in a couple different sizes, but these are in like the scrapbooking and paper crafting section. I'm gonna grab eight of each of these three colors and I'm gonna remove the two halves of the clothespin from the metal spring. Next, I'm gonna pick out three of these snowflakes and I'm going to paint two of them white to go in the middle of my red and turquoise snowflakes. The other one I'm going to leave natural for my white snowflake. Coming back to my clothespin pieces, I'm now gonna take two halves and I'm gonna glue them together on the flat side. You can see it makes I don't know, it looks like a little person or something, but you're gonna glue all of those together so that you have eight of these pieces that have kind of the point at one end and the rounded at the other end. Then taking four of them, you're going to glue the round parts together. You can see there's an angled side where I'm putting a little bit of hot glue and then gluing them together in kind of a plus sign, trying to get them as straight as possible. Doesn't always happen completely straight, but that's okay, that's what makes it homemade. Then the other four, I'm putting glue on the point and gluing it in to the little corner there between the two rounded heads. Then the last step is to glue one of these snowflakes on top for added decoration to the middle, but also it kind of helps hold all the clothespin pieces together. Mm -hmm. 
And then we're gonna do the same thing with our turquoise clothespins and our red clothespins. I will also say that you can do this project using different sizes of clothespins in together in one snowflake. I believe in the section where I got these from Hobby Lobby, they did also have some that were pre-painted in even smaller size. So that would be really cute too. You can use whatever you'd like for the hanger on these ornaments. You could use jute twine, baker's twine. I chose to use this thin black and white gingham ribbon, and I'm just going to glue one end of it uh, on the back of the top piece of my snowflake, and then kind of fold the ribbon over and glue the other end to make a little loop. And here's our finished snowflake ornaments. I think these are so cute and I absolutely love that you can find these clothespins already painted in a bunch of different colors. Today we are making some really easy wood slice vintage Santa ornaments using these wood slice ornaments and Santa die cuts from Hobby Lobby, some paint and a paint marker. So I love this color agave. It's one of my favorite Waverly Chuck paints. So all I'm gonna do is take a small brush and I'm going to paint the top of each of these ornaments. Just being careful to go around the edges, I do still like to see that bark on the edge. So going around the edges carefully and then filling in the space with the paint. Next, I'm taking these Christmas Santa die cuts from Hobby Lobby. They are actually pretty thick, but I'm going to Mod Podge them onto the front of the painted wood slices. I used way too much Mod Podge, so don't use as much as I did, but I'm gonna brush it evenly as I can on the top of the wood slice. And then we're going to press the die cut down, making sure that it's fully adhered to that Mod Podge. Some of them, you may have to turn them slightly or just use larger wood slice ornaments, but we're just gonna make three of these, putting the Mod Podge, pressing down the die cut. And then once I'm sure that it's completely adhered, we will come back and put another layer of Mod Podge over the top of our die cuts. Once that Mod Podge is completely dry, I'm just taking this white paint marker. This is a medium tip and just pressing it down to make little snow dots. This of course is optional, but I thought it added a fun little whimsical touch. I'm gonna do this on all three of the ornaments. Then once that is dry, I'm gonna take the jute string that came with each of the ornaments, put it back through the hole, trim the two ends a little bit, and then I thought I would add one large neutral colored bead to the top of each ornament. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tape so that it's easier to get these two pieces of jute twine through the bead there. Then I'm just going to tie my knot and trim off any excess. And here are the finished ornaments. I think they're so cute. I will also say that Hobby Lobby and the Christmas Crafts had a package of vintage Christmas trees as well. Well, thanks for... Today we're making a really easy and fun snowy bulb ornament. We're going to use these sand ornament bulbs from Hobby Lobby, some mini trees, and glittering snow from Dollar Tree. 
These ornaments are plastic, which I love, makes them safe for kids even to make. I'm gonna take some of these mini trees and we're gonna squish one into the bottom. You can remove the little wood base if you'd like. I chose to just leave mine on. I'm just gonna make a couple of ornaments here just to give you an idea, but these are totally customizable. Anything that can fit in that small opening at the top, can go into this ornament and then add some of the glittering faux snow. Now this is kind of messy. You're gonna see it gets all over my table, but it's not a big deal because it's easy to clean up. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of this into the ornament opening, maybe just to go a little bit less than halfway up the tree. So it's like the tree is in the snow. Again, you could put whatever you'd like in these ornaments. I'm gonna show you another um, example after I make the two with the trees. And then you're just gonna screw that lid back on to your bulb ornament. And that's really all there is to it. You can add, like I said, whatever you'd like. Here's the trees. This one has the snow and some of the little red and green small Christmas leaves that I used in an earlier project with the hot chocolate spoons. Now I'm just taking a thin piece of jute twine and going through the loop. These ornaments do not come with strings, so be advised you will need something that you can make the hanger with. I'm going to put the twine through, put a little tape on the end, and then I'm just going to add three of these smaller plain wood beads. Of course you could paint them if you'd like, but I'm just wanting to leave them the natural color. Then once you get all three of your beads on, just trim that tape off, tie your knot, and trim off any excess that needs to be trimmed away. This will just make a really cute, easy ornament. Then taking some of this red and white checked thin ribbon, I'm going to tie a simple bow for each of my ornaments that we will glue to the top. And here are the three finished ornaments. I just love how simple and cute these are. They're like little mini seek and finds. If you could find smaller little gingerbread men or candy canes to fit in that hole, that would be cute as well. Today, we're gonna to take some mini ornaments from Walmart and add to them to make them more substantial using some tumbling tower blocks ribbon and some paint. So the first thing we'll do for each of the mini ornaments that you have, you're gonna take four of the tumbling tower blocks and glue them together like this. You can use hot glue, but I'll tell you that using the wood glue, even though it takes a little bit longer to dry, you have a little bit more time to make sure that your blocks are lined up and straight and flat. So I'm going to be making three ornaments today. So I'm doing three sets of the four blocks. Once you have the glue on there, try to wipe off any excess. Make sure they're pressed down and straight on the edges as straight as possible. Then coming to our little mini ornaments. I know they have different varieties. The ones I'm using today are white with black printing and black and white ribbon bows. I am removing the hangers from them and then coming back to our blocks, once they're dry, I am just sanding them lightly on each side to get rid of any excess glue that I may not have wiped away. Now for my three ornaments, I'm gonna paint two of them black. I'm gonna paint them on all the sides and edges and I'm going to paint one of them red. Of course, whatever your color scheme is, you can paint your background blocks that will um, go fine with the white and black of the mini ornament. You could also put scrapbook paper on these as well. So here's my red one. And then once these are dry, I am going to sand them lightly with my mini sander just to give them more of a distressed look. So here's that mini sander. I'm just going around each of the edges on the front side and also on the back side. I will also sand lightly on the front of each of the blocks. 
Now one of the black ornaments, I am also going to add some white to, just to make all three of my ornaments a little bit different. But this little mini sander, I get mine at Amazon. It is in my Amazon storefront, but I have also seen it at Walmart as well. So here's for my third ornament. I'm just taking my big chippy brush and I'm just going to brush on kind of randomly some white paint. I will do this on the front, the back, and all the side edges, and then sand this one lightly as well. Once our blocks are sanded after being painted, I'm just taking some hot glue and centering each of the little mini ornaments from Walmart in the center of the blocks. This is such a simple thing, but now it really makes these be more a substantial ornament that you could hang on any size tree. You could do lots of different hangers on here. I just chose this time to use some ribbon. We're just gonna glue it into a little loop and glue that to the back of the ornament. You could use the jute twine with one bead like I've used in some of the previous videos in this series. You could add a whole hanger of mini beads, whatever you'd like. Just have fun creating and using what you have on hand. And here they are, so cute and simple. I'd love to know in the comments what you guys would do with these, what kind of hanger you would put, maybe what colors you would paint your background. Well, thank Today we're making this wood ring snowman using some of these wood rings from Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby, some chunky black yarn, some paint, a toilet paper tube. So I was able to find these a couple times at my Dollar Tree. You get five of them in a package for $1.25. If you cannot find these at your Dollar Tree, look at Hobby Lobby or Michael's in the macrame section. I'm gonna take two of them and paint them white. Then I'm going to take one of my toilet paper tubes here and I'm gonna cut a ring that's probably a little bit less than one inch. Then I have this thicker yarn. I got this, I believe, at Walmart and it's acrylic. The brand is Lion Brand and it's hometown yarn. It says it's a five ounce package and super bulky number six. So I'm gonna cut 20 strands, and I'm gonna fold them in half, push the loop through the tube, and then the ends through the loop. So you're gonna watch me do a few of them here, and then I will jump ahead to the last one. This is number 20. I'm putting it through. This is how I do a lot of my uh, hangers on my ornaments. So now you can see I have them wrapped all the way around the tube. And then I'm going to take a piece of baker's twine and I'm going to tie off the top of what is going to now be our snowman's hat. You can see there's a lot of loose ends. You could leave it like that or you could cut them just a little bit shorter. I'm going to tie this baker's twine in a knot and then I'm going to add a little bow at, um, at the front there. Then taking my scissors, I'm going to hold all the strands together and I'm going to try to cut them even um, to look like a little pom-pom. You can trim this however you want, but I thought this was super cute. This is my first time making one of these little snowman hats using the toilet paper tube and yarn. Then I'm going to trim the ends of the little bow. Now I'm gonna take another longer piece of baker's twine, fold it in half, and I'm gonna thread it on a needle that has a pretty wide open eye. I'm gonna tie a knot on the other end, and then we're gonna poke the needle through the top of the hat and pull it out. The knot will hold it inside, and now we have a hanger for our ornament. Just tie a knot there at the top and trim off any excess.
Now coming back to my two wood rings, I'm going to attach them together just with a little bit of hot glue. Make sure you let this hot glue dry completely before you try to move the rings. You can add extra glue as reinforcement as well. Once it's dry, I'm gonna put some glue like you see there on either side of the head, and I'm gonna slip the hat down, maybe a little bit less than halfway down so it looks like it's on the snowman's head super cute the last thing i'm going to do is cut a length of yarn or you could use fabric to make a little scarf just to add some more decoration to our snowman and also to cover up any hot glue blobs from gluing these two rings together just put glue wherever you'd like you can see how i'm arranging the ribbon to look like a scarf the shorter piece will be kind of hanging off to the side there and the longer piece hanging down and then just trim them to the length that you want and that's all there is to it to make this super adorable snowman ornament i hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll be back for the next in our series of 30 Days of Christmas Ornaments. We are two-thirds of the way through the month already. I can't believe it. Thanks so much for joining me for part two of my DIY Christmas Ornament Series. Please let me know in the comments which of these was your favorite, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.